Hello students. Now this is the third part of the female sex hormone chapter. In the second part you have seen uh, we have discussed about the estrogen and its pharmacology. Now in this part uh, we will discuss about the drugs which are positively or negatively acting on estrogen and its effect. So here we have uh, anti-estrogen drugs as well as we have estrogen receptor modulators which we call it as SCRMs. In the selective estrogen receptor modulator two main drugs uh, identified and uh, used one is the raloxifene and another is the ormiloxifene. First we will see about the anti-estrogen drugs in this the first very much used one is the clomiphene citrate. Uh, this drug uh, has the anti-estrogenic activity while it binds on uh, estrogen receptor alpha and estrogen receptor beta. But the other component, other compounds, other racemate compounds of this drug are having little weak agonistic activity. This drug induces the gonadotropin secretion in women by blocking estrogenic feedback inhibition of pituitary. So when because it is acting on the estrogen and inhibiting uh, the estrogen level there, it actually affects the normal physiology of feedback as well. Right means feed, it affects the feedback mechanism. You know when the feedback mechanism get affected, the secretion release and their inhibition all will get disturbed. So in that way because estrogenic feedback inhibition uh, of pituitary has been blocked other secretions other gonadotropins will you know their secretion will induce. The amount of LHFSH released at each secretory pulse is increased. So now that there, there is no control on LH and FSH release as well. In response the ovary is enlarged. Now what will happen when these uh, uh, hormones will be more in number or more in amount then uh, the ovary enlargement will be there and uh, ovulation occurs if the ovaries are responsive to gonadotropin so ovulation can also occur so uh, miss time ovulation and this uh, problem can be seen antagonism of peripheral action of estrogen results in hot flushes so another effect is uh, it's not uh, where it is uh, synthesized and released it is where it acts in peripherally. So when the peripheral actions are also blocked, then the hot flushes as a side effect can be there. Andrometrium and cervical mucus may be modified. So these effects uh, will come through clomiphene citrate. Uh, usually clomiphene citrate used uh, in case of the sterility. See, uh, as you know that uh, estrogen progesterones are the, uh, you know, needful hormone for conception and for uh, pregnancy. As well as uh, these hormones in different variant, uh, with different levels are given as an uh, contraceptives. So they are, they are also, if you change the level, they are having the potential to inhibit the conception and, and uh, disturb the pregnancy. So in that way, uh, this clomiphene citrate uh, can be useful uh, in the cases where the high amount of estrogen is working or something. So, uh, and is usually that kind of sterility which is due to failure of ovulation. So what we can do 50 mg once daily for 5 days, we can give, uh, start from the 5th day of the cycle. The treatment of this is given monthly. The anti-estrogenic effect of clomiphene on developing follicle, endometrium or cervical mucus can be counterproductive. Luteal phase dysfunction has also been blamed for therapeutic failure. Addition of uh, minotropins or chorionic gonadotropin on the last two days of the course improves the success rate. Uh, what are the ADRs? Uh, 
polycystic ovaries, multiple pregnancy, hot flushes, gastric upset, vertigo, allergic dermatitis, risk of ovarian tumor may be increased. So these kind of adverse reactions uh, can come. This is a serious one, risk of ovarian tumor may be increased because uh, the control of uh, estrogen has been lost. It has some other uses as well. Uh, to aid in vitro fertilization, clomiphene given with gonadotropins causes synchronous maturation of several ova, improves their harvesting for in vitro fertilization. In cases of the IV of uh, uh, processes, uh, clomiphene citrate helps to maturation of the ovum. So they can, the doctors are utilizing this drug as well. Oligospermia. In men also, clomiphene increases gonadotropin secretion, promotes uh, spermatogenesis and tes testosterone secretion. For male infertility, 25 mg daily given for 24 days in a month with 6 days rest for up to 6 months has been recommended. So you can understand that clomiphene citrate is not only in uh, female sterility but also in the male sterility it is very much useful. Now the second category of the drugs, uh, quite uh, discussed drug, selective estrogen receptor modulators, SCRMs. Uh, what we drug which we'll discuss here that is tamoxifen citrate. Uh, this drug uh, acts as a potent estrogen antagonist in breast carcinoma cells, blood vessels, and at some peripheral sites, but as partial agonist in uterus, bone, liver and pituitary. So this drug has a very uh, different effect, uh, kind of two type of effect. Some places it acts as an antagonist of estrogen, some places it acts as an agonist of the estrogen. That's why we, call, we don't uh, include this drug as an antagonist. We call it as a modulator. Inhibition of human breast cancer cells and hot flushes reflect anti-estrogenic action while the weak estrogen agonistic action manifests as a stimulation of endometrial proliferation. So you can understand there's two different effects, two different side effects are also coming in. A lowering of uh, gonadotropin and uh, prolactin level in postmenopausal women. So even it affects in the postmenopausal women in this way. What way? Stimulation of endometrial proliferation, lowering of uh, gonadotropin and prolactin level in postmenopausal women, as well as an improvement in their bone density. A decrease in total and uh, LDL cholesterol without any change in HDL and triglyceride level reflects estrogenic actions. I remember uh, I was working in a company where uh, Reloxifen was the one brand I was, uh, one drug I was selling and uh, it was very much uh, accepted by the gynecologist, uh, even by the cardio doctors because these drugs providing an extra care for women for their heart diseases and other cases like even in the orthopedics were use, using that. A decrease in how oh, so you can understand how it affects on the heart because of changing the cholesterol level. Similar to estrogen uh, hormone replacement therapy it increases the risk of deep vein thrombosis by two to three times. In early cases, it is given as post-nestectomy, adjuvant therapy. Just check it out, this term. While in advanced cases, it is a constituent of palliative treatment. The response rates are high in ER positive breast carcinomas, but some ER negative tumors are also respond suggesting additional non-hormonal mechanism of action. So useful in these two cases. It is also effective following surgery in cancer of male breast. So male breast surgeries can also be affected. You might have heard about the male breast cancers. Tamoxifen is effective orally as a biphasic plasma 
T half is around 10 hours and 7 days and a long duration of action. Some metabolites of tamoxifen are more potent anti-estrogens. The drug is excreted primarily in bile. Uh, mainly side effects uh, what this drug is producing hot flushes, vomiting, vaginal bleeding, vaginal discharge, menstrual irregularities, increased risk of venous thromboembolism, dermatitis, anorexia, de depression, mild leukopenia and ocular change changes are infrequent. It is much less toxic than other anti-cancer drugs. So uh, this is a small uh, video for you uh, where you can understand the anti-estrogenic drugs as well as the estrogen receptor modulators. In this there are some very important drugs to cover that you can go through with that. Reloxifen or Meloxifen, Letrozole and Anastrozole. So by this uh, we can uh, complete the chapter for female sex hormone. These are the references for you. Thank you very much for listening.